Welcome to the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. My name is KJ Ralph Miller. I am the Associate Director of Film Programs here at the museum, and it is my privilege to welcome you all to tonight's screening of the late Anya Svarda's The Gleaners and I, screening on a DCP courtesy of Janus Films. This film is screening as part of our weekly Branch Select series, Working with members of the 17 Academy branches, the Academy Museum presents this weekly series in which every Tuesday we highlight a movie that represents a major achievement in the evolution of cinema and its unique crafts. Today's screening was selected by the documentary branch, and I know some of you are here in the audience tonight. It's great to see you. Um, and uh, this is, uh, as I said, selected by the documentary branch, and it is our extreme privilege to have Academy Award-winning filmmaker Lynn Littman here to introduce tonight's screening and share some words about her dear friend, Anya Sparta. But before we invite Ms. Littman to join us on stage, I want to first speak a little bit about a few exciting things happening at the museum that I know this audience will be particularly pleased to hear. Beginning on November 3rd, our Director's Inspiration Gallery will rotate out from our current focus on Spike Lee to dedicate its space to Anya Sparta. And um, so there will be an entire gallery space dedicated to her interest in photography. She started as a photographer before becoming a filmmaker um, and really looking at her interest in fine art as well as her influence um, on French cinema and cinema at large. The Director's Inspiration Gallery um, will also be accompanied by a suite of film programs here in our cinemas that will look at Varda's work as a jumping off point for discovery of other like-minded filmmakers and visionaries who are working within similar milieus. So stay tuned for news on that. We haven't announced what those programs will be, but I can tease that for the first uh, program in January, February, we will be looking at her Los Angeles-based films that she made between the late 60s and early 80s, and looking at other filmmakers who were documenting or making narrative works about subcultures, countercultures in and around Los Angeles. And that's uh, going to be a very exciting program. We're also going to be looking at other films um, including One Sings, The Other Doesn't, um, and uh, Cleo from Five to Seven, Daguerreotypes, and looking at how those films influenced other filmmakers, as well as the inspiration that she took from um, others making works around the same time to influence her own pieces. So that will be ongoing, and that exhibition is up through, I believe, April of 2024. So many film programs dedicated to Miss Varda in the Vardaverse will be coming to these cinemas very soon. And yes, that is the official name of the series. <laughs> so, and since um, you are here tonight, I wanted to use this time to implore you to become an Academy Museum member. If you become a member, you help to support programs like the one you're here to see tonight, and you get other perks like complimentary admission to the museum for an entire year, invitations to members-only events and film screenings, discount at the, uh, discounts at the museum store, and so much more. So after this screening, please visit academymuseum.org to learn more about how to be a member today. So as we transition into our main attraction this evening, please don't forget to focus on the sounds and images on this screen, not the ones on your little screens. Um, please silence and stow your cell phones and turn off your smartwatches. Please remember there's no eating in the theater and please keep your masks on covering your nose and mouth at all times throughout the program this evening. So our guest tonight, director Lynn Littman, received an Academy Award for her documentary film, Number Our Days, based on the field work of anthropologist Barbara Meyerhoff. She made her feature film directing debut with Testament, starring Jane Alexander, who was Oscar nominated for Best Actress. Ms. Littman was in the first year program of AFI's Directing Workshop for Women, which is such a landmark and incredible program, and she is currently developing a film based on Timothy McVeigh and Gore Vidal, who were pen pals. She was also close friends with Agnes Varda, and when the French filmmaker won the Pioneer Award for the International Documentary Association in 2002, Lynn Littman and fellow Academy Documentary Branch member Kate Amend, who is also here tonight, made the following short tribute video for Ms. Varda, which screened at the IDA Awards that year in 2000, 
to uh, just 20 years ago. So let's please cue that video. It's a couple of minutes long. And after that, we will invite Ms. Littman on stage to share some words about her dear friend. Enjoy this short video clip. Hello, I'm Lynn Littman. Pleasure to be here tonight. I met Agnes Varda in 1968 when the French photographer I was living with brought her home for dinner from the New York Film Festival where her film Le Bonheur was dazzling audiences. She immediately took over the cooking, the evening, and my life. Four months later, she called from Los Angeles asking if I wanted to be her assistant on her new film, Lion's Love. I immediately packed my bags. I'd been gleaned. <laughs> Diary entry, Hollywood, February 24th, 1969. I've learned to drive. <laughs> Agnes is determined to make an American movie since she's living in LA. She fills her frames with sunlight, turquoise swimming pools, and banana leaves a fake Hollywood jungle. The actors, Viva, Rado and Ragney, all want to be movie stars. Black and white news footage of Bobby Kennedy's assassination plays behind their, all of their scenes. One part sunny California, one part national tragedy. It's the intensity of her curiosity that's the magic. Whether or not one cares about what she's looking at, it's the way she looks at it and the connection she makes that demand attention and seduce you. In 2001, Agnes at last films her true obsession, digging for treasure in The Gleaners and I, Les Glaneurs et la Glaneuse, by far her most personal documentary. She says, filming, especially a documentary, is gleaning, Varda wrote, foraging, rummaging, scavenging, things without owners, clocks without hands. I wanted to be as self-revealing as the gleaners in my film. And so filming one hand with the other, as you just saw, horrified by her aging skin and thinning hair, she enters into the horror of it. An animal I don't recognize, she admits. Agnes flirts with death in many of her films. Cleo from Five to Seven, Le Bonheur, and my favorite, Vagabond. On the phone with her in 1985, I tease, Vagabond is the sad bookend to Le Bonheur. She shoots back, this is not sadness, ma chérie. This is despair. Years later, I ask her, how come they let you do this film? Let me, she hisses. I never ask their permission, I ask their money. <laughs> I was so strong in my positions and dedicated to my work. They would never dare to say, well, it's okay for a woman. I never ask their favors, I was a filmmaker. In Gleaners, two years later, a follow-up to the film we're seeing tonight, a psychiatrist says, psychoanalysis is a form of gleaning. What falls from a person's speech, you let it fall and you gather it up. What's picked up, gleaned, is more valuable to us shrinks than what is harvested. Enjoy the gleaners and me, enjoy and yes, I will forever be her assistant. Thank you. <laughs> 